Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going over how scientists measure heat and chemistry. Have you ever touched metal that has been baking in the sun? It's so much hotter than anything else, right? This is for various reasons, but one of them is due to a property which we call heat capacity C, which is the amount of heat required to change the temperature of the system by one degree Celsius. Delving further, if you compare the heat capacity of iron versus water, we find that water has a heat capacity that is roughly nine times higher than that of iron. This means that water requires much more energy to change its temperature compared to an equal mass of iron, which is one of the reasons why an iron pole is so much hotter than a puddle. Interestingly, the high heat capacity of water is one of the reasons that life on Earth is possible. The vast multitudes of it is what keeps the temperatures on Earth more constant than other planets because it can absorb the heat from the sun without getting extremely hot itself. Now back to heat capacity. Scientists measure the change in heat, delta H, in chemistry through a process called calorimetry that measures the amount of heat absorbed or released during a chemical process via the use of a calorimeter. There are various types of calorimeters, but the most common ones include a coffee cup calorimeter for constant pressure. Remember, delta H equals Q or heat when pressure is constant, and a bomb calorimeter for constant volume calorimetry. In their simplest form, both of these calorimeters consist of a reaction vessel inside a water bath. The vessel contains the reactants, and the water bath helps measure the temperature changes. When the reaction occurs, the change in temperature of the water is used to calculate the heat transferred via a thermometer. As talked about previously, the calorimeter and the substances inside it have a known heat capacity, C, which again is the amount of heat required to change the temperature of the system by one degree Celsius. Thinking about it deeper, a glass of water heats up much higher throughout the day than a swimming pool, right? This is because mo more massive substances can absorb more heat, so we have to control for mass. Scientists came up with a refined term called specific heat capacity or specific heat, which is the heat capacity of one gram of the substance denoted by Cs. There is also molar heat capacity, Cm, that is the heat capacity of one mole of substance. To measure this change in heat, Q, one gram of a substance at constant pressure, the coffee cup colorimetry, scientists use the formula Q equals Cs times M times delta T where Cs is the specific heat capacity of the substance, M equals mass, and delta T equals the change in temperature. Keep in mind you can rearrange this formula algebraically for a chemistry experiment to solve for any of these values if they're unknown and you have the others. For constant volume heat change calculations, we use bomb calorimeter, which is similar to the coffee cup example, but think of it as we took that cup, sealed it, and placed it in a water-filled sealed container so pressure is constant. Bomb calorimetry is most often used for combustion reactions and the water still absorbs the heat and is measured to calculate the change in heat. The formula for bomb calorimetry is Q equals negative C cal times delta T where Q equals the change in heat, delta T equals the change in temperature, and C cal is the heat capacity of the entire calorimeter, therefore adjusting for the mass. Over the years, Scientists have tabulated the various calorimetry calculations and found out that they're usually able to calculate delta H for any reaction from other tabulated delta H values, thereby saving time and not having to do all the calorimetric measurements. This led to the discovery of Hess's law, which is a principle in chemistry that states the total enthalpy change for a chemical reaction is the same regardless of the pathway by which the reaction occurs provided the initial and final conditions are the same. Simplifying this law implies that the heat released or absorbed in a chemical reaction is constant, whether the reaction takes place in one step or multiple steps. Hess's law is particularly useful in thermodynamics for calculating enthalpy changes, delta H, for reactions where direct measurement is often difficult. It allows chemists to infer the enthalpy change of complex reactions by combining simpler reactions that are easier to measure or are already known. This is because the enthalpy change for a chemical process is dependent only on the difference between enthalpy of the products and the reactants and not on the specific pathway taken. An example of Hess's law is in the combustion of graphite to form carbon dioxide, C solid plus O2 gas going to CO2 gas. Direct measurement of this reaction's delta H might be challenging. However, 
if the delta H for the formation of carbon monoxide from C and the delta H for the oxidation of carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide are known, these reactions can be combined to represent the total overall reaction. C plus one half O2 going to CO is delta H1. CO plus one half O2 going to CO2 is delta H2. The overall reaction is the sum of these two steps and the overall delta H is the sum of delta H1 and delta H2. This approach demonstrates Hess's law since it doesn't matter how CO2 was formed from carbon and oxygen. The total enthalpy change will be the same. The tabulated delta H values also lead to the idea of enthalpy of formation, delta HF, often referred to as heat of formation, and when used in conjunction with Hess's law, this is a powerful tool for scientists. The enthalpy of formation is a thermodynamic quantity that measures the change in enthalpy, total heat content, when one mole of a compound is formed from its constituent elements in their standard states at a pressure of one atmosphere, ATM, and a specific temperature, usually 25 degrees Celsius, 298 Kelvin, where it's most stable. Let's go through an example. Consider the formation of water H2O from its elements hydrogen H2 and oxygen H2. Both in their standard states, the equation looks like 2H2 plus 2O2 going to 2H2O. The delta HF for H2O is approximately negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole, indicating that the formation of water from hydrogen and oxygen gas releases 285 kilojoules of energy per mole of water formed since elements in the pure state release zero kilojoules. This negative value signifies an exothermic reaction where heat is released to the surroundings. By the way, this is the concept behind hydrogen-powered vehicles. Considering what we know about Hess's law and that enthalpy change for a chemical reaction is the same regardless of the pathway which the reaction occurs, we can therefore calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction based on the enthalpies of formation. The enthalpy change for a chemical reaction can be calculated using the enthalpies of formation and the following equation. Delta H reaction equals the sum of delta HF of the products minus the sum of the delta HF of the reactants, where the sum of delta HF of products equals the sum of the standard enthalpies of formation of, for all the products, each multiplied by its coefficient in the balanced chemical reagent, and sum delta HF of reactants equals the sum of the standard enthalpies of formation for all reactants, each multiplied by its coefficient in the balanced chemical equation as well. Let's go through an example with our handy combustion of methane. The equation for the combustion of methane is CH4 gas plus 2 oxygen gas going to CO2 gas plus 2 H2O liquid. Now we need to sum the delta HF of the reactants and products. Since we have the tabulated data, we know that the delta HF of CH4 methane equals negative 74.8 kilojoules per mole. Delta HF of oxygen equals zero kilojoules per mole. Since oxygen gas is in its standard state, therefore zero. Delta HF of CO2 gas equals negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. And delta HF of H2O is negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole. Plugging these values into the equation looks like delta H reaction equals 1 times negative 393.5 plus 2 times negative 285.8 minus 1 times negative 74.8 plus 2 times 0 equals negative 890.3 kilojoules per mole. By the way, that's 3 times more than the combustion of hydrogen. I hope these explanations help. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask. And if you found value in this video, please like it and let people know about the channel because it really does help spread the knowledge. Based on what you learned, think about the following question. Calculate the enthalpy change for the combustion of octane, the main component of gasoline, given the following information. The balanced chemical equation is CAH18 plus 12.5O2 going to 8CO2 plus 9H2O. The standard enthalpy of formation values are for CAH18, negative 250.1 kilojoules per mole, CO2, negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole, H2O, negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole, and oxygen, 
zero kilojoules per mole.